I've been asked just to share a few thoughts on this very, very controversial question of the right of return. Um, and it's the, the question I, that's put to me I, um, is perhaps putting it slightly in, in black and white. Who has a more uh, a valid right of return? One of the most curious things about Israel, of course, is that the Jewish people uh, have a so-called right of return. Uh, under Israeli law, uh, if you have a grandparent who would qualify as being Jewish, then you have a right, wherever you might live in the world, to, uh, to go to Israel and become an Israeli uh, citizen. And Israel adopted in that sense, the Nuremberg definition, Hitler's Nuremberg definition of, of what was a Jew. So when the State of Israel was created, they said, well, you know what, we'll, we'll do the same thing and make sure that the Jews in the diaspora have a right to come to their safe uh, homeland. Now, um, that's not unique uh, by any means. There are other countries and nationalities in the world uh, where there is a similar kind of right to return. Think of Greece, for example, where Greece, Greek, Greek nationals uh, also have a right um, of return. And there, there are other states in the world that have this. Um, the Palestinian right of return is a very different thing. Um, what we're talking about are now somewhere over 5 million uh, Palestinians who claim to have a right to return who are not living in Israel, but whose parents or grandparents or great-grandparents lost their homes, their houses, their properties, or left them. Um, most of them in, in a one-year period, uh, at the end of 1947 through to the very beginning of 1949, which is when most Palestinians um, left uh, what has now become Israel, and they have landed in um, uh, refugee camps in the West Bank, in the Gaza Strip, in Jordan, Syria, uh, and Lebanon. And let's just remind ourselves, when we're talking about a Palestinian, uh, we're talking about an, a non-Jewish Palestinian, of course, Prior to 1948, Palestinians were Jews and non-Jews uh, alike. And the Palestinians are, of course, as we know, um, ethnically Arabs uh, and many other different, different ethnic groups making up what, what are now lumped together and, and called Palestinians. Now, they claim to have a right of return, a right to return to the houses. Why did they leave? They left because there was a conflict. At the end of the mandate period, which um, Emily has, has walked us through, the period of the mandate under the British, which was intended to create a Jewish homeland, there was effectively a civil war going on under the British, and the British were having a difficult time managing it. Um, and the political leadership of the Arab Palestinians was fighting very hard against the idea of a Jewish homeland. We have to be very clear there was a big difference between the ordinary Arab Palestinians and the political leadership. And it was really the political leadership motivated by um, some of their Arab brethren in other countries who were fighting against the very idea of a Jewish homeland. They rejected the UN partition plan in November 1947, which would have created a Jewish and an Arab state west of the Jordan River, the Arabs, uh, the Arab world generally, and the Arab Palestinian leadership rejected it. Why? Because they didn't like the idea of a Jewish state existing at all. The result was conflict after November 47, leading up to the creation of the state of Israel in 48. Um, and Tens of thousands of Palestinians were forced out of their homes in that period or were called to leave their homes by their own leadership. And then when Israel was attacked by the Arab states in May 1948, the crisis erupted even further. There was more conflict. And uh, hundreds of thousands of, of Palestinians, up to seven or even 800,000 Palestinians, were forced 
to flee. Now, of course, the controversy is why did they force to flee? Did Israel ethnically cleanse the land or did the Arab leadership call them to leave? Uh, I'll leave that dispute to one side. I think Benny Morris, um, if I might just add, is a is a fairly nuanced Israeli historian who I think has a balanced view of things, and he would say, well, there's fault on both sides in, in all of this. Um, in, in the few seconds I've got left, let me just say, no refugee in the world has a right of return. You know, there are over two, 20 million refugees. They're governed by the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Refugees don't have a right of return. They have a right to be absorbed in the country in which they have ended up. The Palestinians claim a right of return based on one UN General Assembly Resolution, 194, 1949. It doesn't give them a right of return uh, at all. Um, and I think this whole UN uh, refugee system for the Palestinians, um, which is costing the world over $1 billion a year, uh, the Palestinian refugees are getting more money per capita than any other refugee in the world but they've been kept in this idea that they have a right of return and it's been used as a political uh, ploy and the Palestinians themselves are, I think, the biggest uh, victims of this and it's standing in the way of a peaceful resolution. We don't have time to go into it, um, but I think in terms of legal rights, it's not a strong uh, claim. And there's obviously a humanitarian issue here. Uh, we understand that it has to be resolved. But legally speaking, um, we, we can't really compare uh, the legal rights. And, and just to close, of course, let's not forget there were over, up to a million Jews who were forced to leave the Arab world in the 1950s, leaving behind their possessions. Uh, unfortunately, they had a state to go to, and that was the state of Israel. Thank you. Thank you.